Hello everyone. Today is Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. For those of you who aren't watching the Super Bowl, <laughs> it's time for things that make you go, mmm. And maybe sports does. <laughs> Not so much for me, but uh, it might work for you. So today, uh, before we get started, I just wanted to start my timer because I keep forgetting to do that. Um, just wanted to let you know that for those of you who uh, were watching last week, you saw that I was getting a um, a message from AHS just as I was starting uh, the Alberta Health Services, and it kind of took me out there for a bit. Uh, because I was actually waiting to find out if I had a positive COVID test. And the message that I got actually wasn't for that. It was to let me know that I had come into contact with someone who had tested positive, which I already knew. Um, so yes, I did test positive. And uh, just so you know, I've been totally fine. I haven't had uh, much for symptoms at all. And uh, I've been feeling normal for the last couple of days so not to worry I did test positive but no none of my close contacts did and uh, I've been just fine so we can move on and get past that and of course <laughs> it was pretty funny that uh, I was waiting to find out if I was positive on the day I was talking about being positive so <laughs> it's not always it's not always a great thing to be positive as I found out uh, on that day. Uh, I'm just going to flip this. I put my uh, my notes on the side where I can see people uh, commenting. So I just wanted to move that over. Hi Heidi. Thanks for, for, thanks for coming. So yeah, today we are talking about passion on things that make you go mmm. And, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, next week is Valentine's Day. And so this is uh, pretty pretty good timing, I would say. And so we're going to talk about passion today on things that make you go, mm. And there are two ways that people think about passion. The first being uh, passionate in a relationship, which we're actually not going to talk about today. I'm going to save that for next week on actual Valentine's Day. Today we're going to talk about passion in your life, about being passionate, about having a passion, and how that impacts your life and all the things that make us go, mmm. I want to start with a quote from one of my favorite bad kitties, from the Bad Kitty Handbook, <coughs> and her name just happens to be Marilyn Monroe. And Marilyn is a very, very sexy woman, of course, or was, I should say. And uh, she, she had her struggles, and she also had a lot of insight into what passion and living your life by your passion is all about. So I will, would just like to start with this. I'm trying to find myself as a person Sometimes it's not easy to do, and I'm sure we've all been there. Millions of people live their entire lives without finding themselves, but it is something I must do. And part of finding yourself is finding your passion. Because we all have something that ignites us, that makes us excited, that uh, we just love to do, love to be involved in, and sometimes it's hard to find that. <clears throat> we are drawn to passionate people. There's something about someone who is living their passion that just draws us in, that lights up a space, that makes us go, oh, I want that. Oh, mm, that's so amazing. They, because they stand out from the crowd. They are just on another level. And uh, we find them interesting and inspiring because they're so sure of themselves. <clears throat> and something uh, around that is the fact that our lives are so 
structured. We're told that we, we have to behave certain ways, that we have to do certain things to be accepted. And that doesn't always work for our passion. So when someone breaks through that, when they get out of that space, they shine. And I'm sure everyone here has had those moments when they have shone and, uh, and, and have also been around people who have shone and have realized that, oh, there, there's just something that is worthwhile in pursuing about having a passion. And it starts with being curious. I'd like to read you a little quote from my badass calendar to start the curious section. I told myself pretty much every day for 40 years that I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And as a result, remained in the fetal position of hopelessness and confusion for decades. Had I replaced the phrase, I don't know, with clues are all around me, I would have opened myself up to receive tidbits of clarity instead of slamming the door on Lord only knows how many golden opportunities. I love that. The clues are all around me. This is so awesome. Is they really are. We just we just don't don't just don't always pay attention or or are in a headspace to notice them. So some of the things that you can be curious about to help you find your passion are who are the people you're jealous of or maybe even find a little annoying. <laughs> I find that um, I get I can be quite jealous of people who are doing the things that I really want to do because I wish I was them <laughs> and and I know that I know that I I've always had a passion for writing for acting for singing all and all, anything artsy and so when I see people who are actually making a living doing those things I kind of feel a little sad and wish that I had done more earlier in my life to to get to have more of that in in it and that also that ties in with the next point which is talents that you have or things that you enjoyed as a kid get curious about that kind of stuff you know what was it that when I when I was a little kid that I always wanted to do that I always uh, like for me, I was always drawing, always, always drawing or writing a story or creating, creating a play. <laughs> and and um, I won't say I'm especially super uber talented at any of those things. However, if I worked at them more, I would be more so because I enjoy them. I love doing them. And that tr ties into the next piece, which is you lose track of time when you're doing these things. All of those things are clues as to what your passion is and could be. And when you start looking at your life with that curiosity and wondering, oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that, that draw as a child. I remember that time that I was out doing, you know, um, maybe Heidi going for a a motorcycle ride and how much I enjoyed it and those are the things that you can that are your passion because that's what makes you excited what lights you up what gives you uh, joy it makes you go mmm and the next thing to do is take risks another badass calendar quote once you wake up become aware of your thoughts beliefs and words and start choosing them wisely. You can avoid staying stuck in a life of excruciating ho hummery or worse. So if you don't want to be stuck in that ho hummery, start paying atten attention to your curiosity and through that take some risks. Master a new skill um, in, the, in the art realm you know I've always loved drawing but I never felt like I was a painter but of late I've started painting I took some classes in watercolor pencil drawing I took um, just a drawing class in general just to get myself 
back into that space. And uh, I've learned, you know, new new cooking skills, new um, uh, this <laughs> doing Facebook Live. I've learned that, you know, just keep pushing and trying new things to get yourself out of that ho hum space. Um, I love. Uh, we've talked about how much I love Mae West, and uh, <laughs> she says, "I'll try anything once, twice if I like it, three times to make sure." And uh, uh, Kim Cattrall calls herself a, self a trisexual because she'll try anything, at least once, <laughs> and, and that's what makes life exciting: is going on adventures, trying new things. And uh, it also brings you closer in your relationships as well when you're um, doing new things, trying new things. Uh, <laughs> my cat's trying to get through the door. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. He's trying a new adventure. He's trying to become a magician and walk through doors. Uh, lastly, uh, honor your dreams. Excuse me. Uh, let's talk to Gilda Radner or look at Gilda Radner. Oh, excuse me for a second. She says, while we have the gift of life, it seems to me the only tragedy is to allow, to allow part of us to die, whether it is our spirit, our creativity, or our glorious uniqueness. And then she says, dreams are like paper. They tear so easily. I hope you've ever had a dream that was crushed, that you let someone talk you out of, that was didn't go well, so you gave up on it without really giving it a, a, a real chance. Our dreams are our passions, and when we allow them to disappear, to dissipate, um, our life is no longer going, mm, it's going, oh. The bad, uh, the human ability to rationalize, defend, and accept our self-imposed drama is bananas, especially when we have all the power within us to choose and create realities that totally kick ass. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'll say mm to that. <laughs> let's let's get those things into our lives that make us excited, that get us going. Before we uh, sign off for tonight, um, I'd like to read a portion of my other book, Serial Love. I meant to read this uh, with having an adventure. Because um, there are so many things that we can do that are simple, that are um, that don't take a lot of money, that don't take a lot of planning, that can be an adventure. And as I said, it can be a, uh, a contributor to being closer to someone in your life. And uh, this is about halfway through the book, Serial Love. And uh, for those of you who don't know the book, it is a, uh, an erotic thriller. And the uh, heroine, Kathy, <laughs> is discovering that she's polyamorous. And so she's going through a lot of different, discovering a lot of different relationships and meeting a lot of different people. And one of them is Alexi. And Alexi is a cop. And this is their second date. And they have already gone to the shooting range and gone out for brunch and for coffee. And now she has made a suggestion on what they should do with their day. So when we arrived at the festival, a rock cover band was playing on the big outdoor stage. Alexi grabbed my hand and we quick marched over to the front of the stage. He turned to me and started to dance. I laughed and joined in. He was a good dancer. Fluid, natural, great rhythm. We danced every song until the end of the set. We found seats near the stage and Alexi excused himself. He came back with two Canadians from the beer tent. Not being a fan of beer, I declined. Oh, sorry. I just assumed everyone drank beer. Too many cops in my life, I guess. I'll get you something else. I asked for a vodka cooler, whatever they had, and he went off on his mission. 
By the time he returned with the Smirnoff ice, the next band was warming up. They were a country band. We drank our drinks as we couldn't leave that area with them through the first two songs. He looked at me with his eyebrows raised. I wrinkled my nose and shook my head. We left the extra beer behind and went to wander the grounds. I browsed the jewelry and art booths. Alexei was drawn to the leather vendor and bought a hand tool belt. <laughs> Just pause here. <laughs> my friend Barbie Lee, when she uh, read the book, she said that this was so me because I didn't want to stick around for the country band. <laughs> I wouldn't have stuck around for the country band and I uh, didn't let Kathy stick around for the country band either. Uh, we stopped at a toy booth and giggled at some of the stuffed creations that looked like happy monsters and played with a handmade game with wood blocks and colored squares. Alexi picked up one of the monsters I'd been looking at, bought it and handed it to me. It was about 10 inches tall, made of a soft purple material with big green eyes and three lashes on each eye, a straight mouth with a slight upturn at the ends and two long rectangular teeth. A tuft of orange hair on either side above his oblong striped teal ears. Its little hands stuck out just under the ears with big feet sticking out at the bottom in a bright fuchsia fuzzy material. It was a crazy mismatch and I loved it. We wandered around a little longer looking at everything from purses to switch plate covers, socks to cards, all handmade. Our last stop was the glitter tattoo booth. The artist was just finishing a starburst on a child's cheek. Which one do you want? I looked at Alexi and laughed. Um, I scanned the pictures hanging on the tent wall. How about the cat? The artist gave me a glittery cat with pink whiskers on my forearm. I felt silly and special all at once, watching it take shape. When she was done, Alexi went to pay her. I grabbed his arm. Not yet. Which one do you want? He started to shake his head, but I must have looked like there was no option as he nodded his head in compliance instead and chose the Iron Man mask. She put it on his bicep and I paid her for both with a generous tip. She was chuckling to herself as we walked away. I was pretty sure that this probably was the first big tough cop she'd done all day. We'd been at the festival for over two hours and another band was starting to play. They were hip hop and seemed pretty good. We started to check out the food trucks. There was so much choice, my mind boggled. Alexi wanted a gourmet burger, so to t make it easy on myself, I chose the truck next to him, his, which was Tex-Mex. I got the fish tacos, pupusas, a salsa with a limeade. Alexi got the mushroom and avocado bi bison burger on ciabatta with thin cut fried potato and a Coke. <laughs> I, I kind of have a thing for food, <laughs> so there's a lot of uh, things about food in my books. Uh, we sat at a table near the music stage and people watched as we ate. And people watched as we ate, not people watched them as they ate. <laughs> my monster sitting on my lap watching too. Our knees were touching under the table and I felt electricity turn, getting turned on by simple connection, so much so I barely tasted my food as I watched him devour his. This man sure knew how to eat. All business, no distraction. And we'll leave it there because it starts to get kind of steamy after that and um, Facebook doesn't like that kind of stuff. So <laughs> we'll just leave it there. So to recap, we were talking about passion and that was about taking a risk and having an adventure. And that kind of thing makes me go, mm. I hope it makes you go, because mm. without passion, there is really nothing to make you go, mm. So next week, we talk today about having passion in your life, about uh, what it means to be passionate, to find your passion. And next week, we're going to talk about passion in relationships. And I hope that you will come back and join us for that. I would also really like it. I'm going to put out a request on Facebook and uh, if you are able to send me a message, a private message, I would like to hear your stories about passion and your favorite Valentine's Day, your favorite birthday, uh, something that made you feel special and loved and uh, passionate in your relationship. So I look forward to hearing your stories and I look forward to sharing my thoughts and maybe some of your stories if you're willing to allow that. 